December and we're talking about signs and wonders. You know, overall, we're kind of irrational people. We might talk about the stars that pointed to Jesus and wonder if some, you know, astronomical thing was going on to make them especially bright. Or I heard uh, a parody of Unitarian Universalism years ago that actually converted a friend of mine to come and check out the congregation. It was a remake of a Christmas hymn that said, God bless ye Unitarians, let nothing you dismay. Remember, there's no evidence there was a Christmas day. When Christ was born, we do not know, no matter what they say. You know, we can be so rational like that. And yet, if you look at our history, and I bet if you look at your own, you'll also see that there are these amazing, call them coincidences, call them miracles, call it synchronicity, call it what you will. There are these amazing occurrences. I thought I'd tell you one of them, but there are actually a number of stories like this in Unitarian and Universalist history. Individuals who had compelling mystical experiences that they took into the world, and also things that happened between people. Those are my favorites. So I'll tell you one about John Murray. John Murray was a preacher in England in the 1700s, and he had a very good life. He had a family that he loved. He had a daughter and a wife, and he came to understand God as all loving. He came to understand that Calvinism was wrong, and he didn't believe a loving God would create hell. And he said this, and it wasn't good. He struggled for a while. He got excommunicated. And then, tragically, his wife and daughter died. And at that point, he just kind of said, forget it. Forget the loving God thing. I don't know why I thought that was true. Uh, forget it. I'm not, I don't believe it anymore. So in this place of some despair, he decided to leave England and go to New York. So he got on a boat called the Hand in Hand and started sailing to New York. And a brutal storm came along when they were near the coast, and he actually wound up in New Jersey, someplace he really hadn't intended to go. And, but he had some time because there was no wind. The ship couldn't leave New Jersey. It was just there on the rocks. So he got up and he walked to see what was going on in this place in New Jersey where he'd landed. So this was 1770 that his ship, you know, got beached in New Jersey. So in 1760 in New Jersey, a guy by the name of Thomas Potter, who had a very deep conviction that God was all loving, who in fact also was a kind of heretic who wanted to hear a gospel preached that was not about hell and damnation, but was about hope and love. Thomas Potter had built a chapel in 1760. He was an old man. And he said, someday a preacher is going to show up who's going to preach this gospel that I need to hear. Thomas Potter, a farmer, wanted to hear this gospel of a loving God. So he built this chapel in 1760, and then he commenced to wait. And 10 years later, along comes John Murray, and he runs into Thomas Potter, and they start to talk. And Thomas Potter learns that he's a preacher and says, what kind of preacher? And they come around it. They learn that they share this deep theology of an all-loving God. And Thomas Potter says, I built a chapel for you. I've been waiting for you. I knew if I waited that the preacher would arrive. Well, John Murray wasn't really having any of it. He said, look, I gave that up. It caused me nothing but pain. I don't want to preach that gospel. And Thomas Potter said, how about this? If the wind doesn't blow by Sunday, if you're still stuck here in New Jersey, just preach once and see what happens and see and maybe you'll decide that you want to stay. The wind didn't blow. John Murray preached that Sunday and then the crowd came and that little chapel was packed and John Murray stayed there then for decades and that was his congregation until he eventually went up to Gloucester, Massachusetts on the Cape and started a congregation up there as well these early congregational settings. In 1886, the Universalists put up a historical marker 
to mark where that chapel had been. And in fact, where John Murray landed, it's now a Unitarian Universalist camp called Murray Grove and Conference Center. Gorgeous place. I commend it to you to go sometime. I love stories like this because they say the whole foundation of how universalism began to be practiced in the United States was as whimsical as the wind blowing or not blowing. So many things when you start to talk to someone, how did you meet your spouse? How did you happen to live in this city? How did you happen to study what you studied? People will say something like, well, I didn't really mean to except that the day that I was going to go here, I couldn't go, so I went there, and then I fell in love. Where they just tell you amazing stories about the circuitous ways the, the most profound parts of our lives are determined. Which way the wind was blowing, or whether the wind stopped blowing. We all have these stories of miraculous things that happen, and I say, why not enjoy them? I have a friend who is the most rational person I know. Her whole life is built on a very scientific, rational belief system. And one night she had a dream where she was told that she needed to leave where she lived and go to another city. Well, she thought this was ridiculous. This is a true story. This isn't a fable. This is a true story. She thought that was ridiculous. So she said, why would I do that? And she kept having that dream until she finally just threw up her hands and said, all right, I'll go check it out. I'm not moving there, but I'll go visit there. And when she visited, her heart was full and she knew that she belonged in this new place and she moved. When we listen to our dreams, when we listen to the signs that are around us that seem to be pointing us in some way, why not investigate them? Now, I think that my friend was smart. She didn't say, I had a dream I should move, so I'm selling all my stuff immediately and I'm just moving. You know, there are stories of people who do that more bold following. I'm of the you know, follow the dream and, you know, what do they say? Praise Allah and tie your camel to a post. I'm for the check it out and, you know, as much as you can, do it a little bit at a time and make sure, because I don't know about you, but there are so many signs around, I couldn't possibly honor them all. So I urge you to be more like John Murray and say, well, look, if the wind doesn't blow by Sunday, I'll preach once and then we'll see what happens from there. I urge you to stand in what you learn rationally, but always to be open to the signs, to the wonders, to the mystery of life. Because so often that unexpected place is where the deepest joy ends up coming in. May you honor the signs this month and every month, and may we together seek to understand the signs of our times, our common times, by sharing not only what's painful, what's going on that's hard in this world, but also those tiny, miraculous connections.